With Yu-Gi-Oh! It's like comparing pizza and pasta. Both Italian, both delicious, but each with its own unique flavor. The same goes for the differences between the Yu-Gi-Oh! series, Classic, GX and now 5Ds. While the classic manga charmingly flirts with minor changes, GX and 5Ds go all out, serving us completely new stories. Now, while the GX manga has many points that I absolutely love and even prefer over the anime, the 5Ds manga, unfortunately, doesn't quite hit the mark for me. Sure, it's interesting to read something different and it's not bad by any means. But overall, I would prefer the anime in almost every aspect. So today, let's look at the 5 biggest differences between the 154 episode anime and the 68 chapter long manga. Sherry LeBlanc, the Psychotype Since she was a child, Sherry has been on the run with Ellsworth because she possesses the Z1 card. This card cost her parents their lives. To learn more about this card and the organization Iliasta, she repeatedly appears in the story. Sometimes she challenges others to a duel and other times she easily holds up grown men or throws some spinning kicks. She did everything she could to avenge her parents and destroy Iliasta. Until the one activated the spell card Brain Control and managed to convince her to fight for Iliasta, the ones who killed her parents. He promised her that everyone would be reunited with their families. The fine print was that this reunion would take place in the afterlife. To bring her back to the side of the good guys, Crow and Akiza had to defeat her in a tag duel. And in the end, she also had to face defeat by Jack. But at least she played a significant role in the anime. She has a past, a goal, a plot twist and even a Bankai. <laughs> The manga takes us on a slightly different journey. Here, she's a student at the elite dual academy for students with psychic abilities like hers, Akiza, Simsala and Wonster Energy. She and Akiza were at the top of their class, but she felt her heart torn out by Akiza when she simply turned her back on the school because she just wasn't happy there. She could never forgive her for that betrayal. Okay, she could after Akiza beat her in the tournament. They tried to build a strong rivalry here, but didn't even have 5 chapters for it. So it doesn't feel like a rivalry between Yugi and Kaiba, but more like Ino and Sakura. Actually, Sherry is pretty overpowered with the ability as she basically embodies the Millennium Eye. Seriously, after some concentration, she can see what cards her opponent has in their hand and she doesn't even need a fancy device for it. This ability becomes completely OP when she combines it with the permanent spell card Name Erasure and the permanent trap card Mokusatsu, which sent the opponent's hand in the graveyard if she guesses the cards correctly. This leaves the opponent completely powerless because how can you do anything without new cards? Luckily, Akiza had the ability to know what she would draw next and could keep her eyes closed, which tricked Cherry. Of course, it's not really safe to duel on the bike with your eyes closed, but it worked out. The Orphan Kids Growing up in the slums of satellites, a desolate area comparable to many central train stations in Germany, Kellen teamed up with the orphan kids Yusei, Jack and Crow to make the place a bit better. Together they took down one gang after another. They drove out every single gang and Kellen even saved Yusei's life once. What a hero! But his heroism went to his head and he started to lose it a bit. First, he lost Jack and Crow from his team because he beat up a little kid after a duel. Then, when security started arresting duelists one after another, Kellen saw them as enemies too and carried out a bombing, which pushed Yusei to finally break away from him. The others still wanted to help him out of his mess, but in the end, he got arrested. Later, he became one of the Dark Signers and eventually the sheriff of a town with the revolver dual disc. Yusei and Crow stayed in satellite, while Jack was elevated to the heights of dueling fame thanks to Goodwin. But Goodwin was actually using him, which they realized when he suddenly became the final boss in season 2. 
he became a Sina and a Dark Sina at once and wanted to reshape and control the world with his own power. A plan that didn't work out well. Fun fact! Originally, Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds was supposed to be much darker than its predecessors and what we eventually got. Not only was Yusei meant to look more bettered, but Crow would have been a completely different person. The characters were supposed to be much grittier and the backstories much more dramatic. While it's unclear what else would have been included beyond dead parents, more details aren't known. Initially, the story was also meant to focus heavily on themes like social classes, inequality and the division between different societal groups. Sure, this was somewhat addressed with Satellite and New Domino City, but much weaker than originally planned. However, as so often, the realities of the television industry trashed the plans. The producers decided that a broader, younger audience probably wasn't ready for a Yu-Gi-Oh version of Blade Runner. Concerns that complex and dark themes might shock younger viewers led to the series taking a friendlier, less depressing direction. After all, card games are supposed to spread joy, not existential crisis. In the manga, all the main characters are present as we know them, even though Yusei and Crow weren't orphans. Unlike Jack and Kellen, who were both taken by Goodwin and used as test subjects to find a successor for the Red Dragon Arc Fiend. Of course, they were very promising candidates for this position. Jack was number 11, since the Jack in a deck of cards is also the 11th card, and Kellen was number 0 because of his strategy of playing without cards in his hand. In their final duel, Kellen intentionally lost because he was afraid of being separated from his friends. As a result, Jack received the card to manifest the dual dragon, which worked out. However, Kellen overheard Goodwin's true intentions one day. Goodwin actually didn't see them as his stepsons, but merely as lab rats. Kellen wasn't cool with that, so to protect his stepbrother Jack and the others, he stole the Arc Fiend and took off. Deep down, Kellen was always a good guy, while Jack was ultra arrogant and evil. Almost until the very end. Duel at your own risk. In Yu-Gi-Oh! Classic there was the Shadow Games, where the duel also took a toll on the duelist's body whenever they lost a monster or, even worse, life points. You could literally lose your head. In GX there was also the Shadow Game, which in the manga was summoned through the darkness in an earring, making the duelist suddenly realize that the life points weren't the only thing at stake. And in 5Ds there are the Nordic God cards, which don't hold back and can really pack a punch, or the duels with the Dark Signers. In those cases, you would better put a helmet on and hope you're not dueling in a skyscraper that's being torn apart by a giant Godzilla. That's a point which is interesting in the manga. The strange thing is, you don't have to be the bad guy to do this, because everyone does it. And the better you are, the more you can injure your opponent in the duel, which you actually want, so they might not be able to continue racing and you can win the duel that way. It's absolutely bizarre of trying to make sense of it all. Which brings us to the keyword. This ability is called Sense. If you're good enough, you can also use it to protect yourself like Jack. The faster you ride, the more the hologram manifests. Then there's Yusei's cross sense technique and divine powers all the way to the dark sense, which is basically like the shadow realm, but only for one duelist. There's also the light sense, which is like the dark sense, just in light. If the D wheels while dueling weren't enough of an adrenaline kick, they just had to throw in pain as well. The legendary dragons. 10,000 years ago, there was a war. The Crimson Dragon, along with its dragon followers, had to defeat the Crimson Devil. 5,000 years later, they had to fight again against the Earthbound Immortals, losing one of their dragons in the process. In our time, five chosen ones were appointed to carry on the will of the Crimson Dragon, each equipped with a legendary dragon and because it's just cool, a tattoo that's more than just body art. It's a symbol of the bond and power. And when things get hard, all the tattoos fuses on one duelist 
giving him an extra boost. Once the danger at the end of the series is gone and the Crimson Dragon no longer sees a need for them, it simply takes back the tattoos and disappears. Here, not only you say, Jack, Leo, Luna, Akiza and Crow have the legendary dual dragons, but there are many more. Kellen, Goodwin, Sect and the Skyrider also possesses them. Unlike in the anime, most of these dragons are difficult to control because they infect their owners with a dark aura when played. Only the Stardust Dragon is an exception. You say obtained it not out of greed for power, but because you wanted to release it from its suffering. This is why the Stardust Dragon is the only one capable of exorcising duelists from the darkness through attacks against the other dragons. In this world, these dragons don't exist to save it from some threat, but to resurrect the ultimate god. Every time one of these dragons is used in a duel, it contributes energy to the ritual until Goodwin finally frees the Crimson Dragon and even becomes the ultimate god himself. Ultimate is defined a bit differently here than we might expect because, as you can imagine, the ultimate power wasn't quite so ultimate and was defeated by Yusei using the power of friendship. The true power doesn't lie in the cards, but in the hearts of cards. Yusei's Golds Jack was a traitor and not only stole Yusei's custom built D wheel, but also took the Stardust Dragon. Yusei was, of course, furious because that jerk was making a huge career while he was still stuck rotting in satellite. So he built another D wheel and followed him to New Dominion City, where he wanted to at least get his Stardust Dragon back. But not so easy. He wanted to do it in a turbo duel, which you say would have won if the duel had gone to the end. Instead, he ended up in prison, but since Goodwin saw everything, he got Yusei out after a duel and even let him participate in the tournament, where he got his revenge against Jack. This victory only led to more problems, as the Dark Signers became aware of him and his friends. That led to a war with them. Once the Dark Signers and Goodwin were dealt with, Yusei had to help his old buddy Kellen out of trouble. Then it was off to the World Championship, where he dueled Susanomon in the finals, leading us into the fifth and final season. A duel against what is essentially himself, or rather, a copy of him. The One. All in all, Yusei just wanted his Stardust Dragon back and wanted to compete in tournaments. Fun fact! Imagine if you say had Zoro's sense of direction and suddenly found himself in the world of One Piece, ending up with a bounty. How high do you think it would be? 25 cents in refund money? No, it's exactly 25 million 2000 berries. Why such an odd number? It's because those are the attack and defense points of the Stardust Dragon. In the manga, Yusei couldn't imagine anything better than spending his day competing in turbo duels against other skilled duelists. But finding such opponents is tough when you constantly talk down to everyone, making nobody want to duel with you. Then Sect came into his life and taught him the value of friendship. During a duel against the Skull Rider, his friend Sect was severely injured and Yusei wanted to rush him to the hospital. But Jack had other ideas and wanted to duel on the way. This was also Yusei's first defeat which hit him hard. But at least he managed to save Sect. Akiza also handed him a defeat and when Lazar invited him to the tournament, Yusei was really hyped about it. That was until Sect was manipulated by the Skull Rider and the Darkness. Yusei couldn't just let that slide and wanted to save his friend, just like he had brought him out of loneliness. He knew the only way to do that was to win the tournament. And that became his sole focus and goal. And those were the 5 biggest differences in the Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds manga. And which do you prefer, anime or manga? Write it down in the comments. And if you want to see the 5 biggest differences in the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX manga, then you just have to click here. Otherwise you can subscribe here and here is just another random video, I don't know. But that's it again from me, I hope you enjoyed this video, we'll see us next time so take care my friends.